Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. The governor of Imo State, Hope Uzodima, has asked the Supreme Court to strike out an application seeking to review its judgment on Imo governorship election that declared him the winner of March 9 election. Now, Emeka Ihoda, who is the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, had claimed that Hope Uzodima obtained the judgment fraudulently. So, if the Supreme Court can review Imo State, why should it review Baesta's verdict? I still have my guest with me this evening, with me in the studio, and uh, Mokhtar Mohamed, thank you for staying with us. I, I need your quick reaction to all of this going on. I, 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 I'm just waiting. I want to see will the Supreme Court be able to reverse themselves in this in these two. Is uh, there a precedent? Will they reverse? There's not been any precedent that yes. I know, uh, even though if I'm not a lawyer. The only one I, I think I know, like um, the, 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 the Baesa incident where the, the, the um, um, APC chairman was saying that it happened in Bauchi State where they, were, they, were, they, they had to do an election. But we should know at that time the, the Electoral Act was not um, in place at that time. So now we have the Electoral Act and all elections have been done by the Electoral Act. Whether they will, I, I, I doubt much whether there will be any reversal in any of those um, decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, especially the emo own seems to be seem to be the most um, most controversial. With the bias sound, there have been antecedents, and I, I don't think the Supreme Court want to to, to change those antecedents that are already yes. in, in, yes. in law. All right. Now, the, 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 the recent controversies over the Supreme Court ruling are an indication that the electoral process has not delivered on its mandate. Would, would you agree with that? Many people have... Of course, we've agreed with that. Even the president have agreed with that, because that's why you're saying there, there will be, a, there will be a, um, a, a electoral reform. And that is what the National Assembly even have said that, that like, by its coming time we still begin to do we, we begin to do that it must be um, through the um, through the ballot um, ballot board that we, we will begin to elect our leaders and and trying I, I, I think the, the, the situation is is um, is dicey it's dicey but I, I believe that um, our electoral processes are flawed there's a lot of inconsistency in our electoral rule. Um, and that has not been addressed. Until that is addressed, I think bringing in technology okay. into our electoral processes will be the height of cleaning up the system. Well, let's take a look at INEC. Do, do you think INEC is saddled saddle with so much a weighty issue as it stands right now? No, I don't think so. I think um, INEC is part of the problem. Okay. INEC is part of, uh, they're more or less with the political class. They seem to do their thing with the political class. I think what we need is, is, is an, an elect chairman that will be very courageous to do the writing and make sure that the, the writing is being done. Yes. There, there, there's, there's, still the, there's still the clamor for the Electoral Act to be reformed. I mean, that's still, that's still in the corridors. Now, how can the electoral process be modified to address this matter of delivering on free and fair, transparent election? What do you think can be done? I think what should be done, like I said, we have to go back to the, the technological age. Like, when we are using... Um, What's the one they use now that even sometimes they said if you are not able to be captured, mm. you cannot do voting and you must vote electronically. I think that, that's what we, we should be thinking of. We need to begin to think of how we can vote electronically, how we can have the server transmit those results immediately from the center to Abuja because that, is, that will guarantee safety of the result whereby ballot boxes are snatched before the INEC people comes to I mean, do the counting. But if you have this um, 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 result transmitted right from the polling unit to the server, then you have clean electricity. I think that is one thing we should do. That will stop violence. That will stop malpractice, especially from the polling points. Mokhtar Mohamed, social commentator. Thank you very much for being part of PLOS Politics. This Thank evening. you. And now we'll take our PLOS report. And when I return, I'll give you my take. Do stay with us. A coalition of civil society organizations, known as the Alliance of Civil Societies, have called on the Supreme Court to put the interests of the residents of Imo State into consideration as it reveals the Imo State governorship judgment recently passed by the Apex Court. The group was speaking through its vice chairman, Ibiang Livinos, at a press conference in Abuja, says the controversial judgment earlier passed by the Supreme Court was a miscarriage of justice. Mr. Ibiang further adds that the number of votes cast in the election was more than accredited voters, a situation orchestrated by the APC candidate Hope Uzodima as he tried to rig the polls. The total number of voters accredited for the governorship election held on 9th March 2019 in Imo State 
was 823,743, while the total valid vote cast was 731,485. Note that the petitioner did not plead or lead evidence of a different accreditation. Hope Uzodima fraudulently misled the Supreme Court into holding that a total of 213, 495 votes were unlawfully excluded from his votes. The fraud was further orchestrated by the fact that the total votes cast was more than the number of voters accredited to vote. Remember that every decision of the Supreme Court involves the good name of the judiciary. Proof to the world that the Supreme Court is indeed sacred. Let your verdict help to retain the good grace of our people. Renowned senior advocate of Nigeria, Michael Zekome, has shown his weight behind the Supreme Court's judgment, which sacked the all-progressive Congress gubernatorial candidate in Bayelsa State, David Leon. Mr. Zekome says the judgment is in line with the nation's constitution and is a recipe for law and order. As far as I know, legally, constitutionally speaking, as a constitutional lawyer, there is no candidate for the APC in Bayelsa State. The Constitution says the governor cannot run without a deputy. And that everything that pertains to that governor also pertains to the deputy. So I said to separate both the deputy and the governor is like trying to futilely attempt to play Hamlet without the Prince of Denmark or to argue that six is not the same as half a dozen. It's clear to see that with the recent kidnappings, killings and banditry being perpetrated by these insurgents, our nation's security situation is in a quagmire that needs to be reconstructed in its present architectural system. It's a must that this, if this war is to be won, then something has got to be done. The security of every Nigerian cannot be politicized. The situation of Nigeria today is desperate, and desperate situations require desperate measures in the collective interest of all well-meaning Nigerians. Let the monster of insecurity be tackled actively and proactively with the full weight of Nigeria's security and defense capacity. And the question begs, does Uzo Dima, does he have the right to tell the court what to do? A statement asking the courts to strike out this case seems like a mockery of the judiciary system that he has benefited from. Let the Supreme Court hear this case out. Many have argued that what happened in Imo State is a miscarriage of justice and hoping that the Supreme Court will correct this wrong and set the judiciary on the right path. The Supreme Court is not infallible and there is nothing wrong in them looking at Ihe Dior's arguments, seeing the merits and give the right judgment on this. That's all for tonight. Join us again tomorrow. Have a good evening.